Hello, my friends. What is prana part two is going to be pretty quick. It's an excerpt from Raja Yoga by Swami Vivekananda that I really wanted to include in your understanding of prana. Think of the whole universe as an ocean of ether vibrating under the action of prana and consisting of plane after plane of varying degrees of vibration. In the more external, the vibrations are slower, and nearer the center, they are quicker. Think of the whole thing as a circle, the center of which is perfection. The farther you move from the center, the slower are the vibrations. Matter is the outermost plane. Next comes mind, and spirit is the center. Now, it is clear that those who live on a certain plane of vibration will have the power to recognize each other but will not recognize those above or below them. Yet, just as the telescope and the microscope, we can increase the scope of our vision. Similarly, by yoga, we can bring ourselves to the state of vibration of another plane and thus enable ourselves to see what is going on there. Suppose this room is full of beings whom we do not see. They represent prana in a certain state of vibration while we represent another. Suppose they represent a quick one and we the opposite. Prana is the material of which they are composed, as well as we. We are all parts of the same ocean of prana, and we differ only in the rate of vibration. If I can bring myself to the quick vibration, this plane will immediately change for me. I shall not see you anymore. They will appear. Some of you, perhaps, know this to be true. All this bringing of the mind into a higher state of vibration is included in one word in yoga, samahi. All these states of higher vibration, super conscious vibration of the mind are indicated by that one word, samadhi, and the lower states of samadhi give us visions of these supernatural beings. In the highest kind of samadhi, we see the real thing. We see the material out of which all these classes of beings are composed. One lump of clay being known, we know all the objects made of clay in the universe. Thus, we see that pranayama includes all that is true even of spiritualism. Similarly, you will find that wherever any sect or body of people is trying to discover anything occult, mysterious, or hidden, they are really practicing some sort of yoga, attempting, attempting to control their prana. You will find that wherever there is an extraordinary display of power, it is the manifestation of prana. Even the physical sciences can be included in pranayama. What moves the steam engine? Prana acting through the steam. What are all these phenomena of electricity and so forth but prana? What is physical science? The science of pranayama by external means. Prana manifesting itself as mental power can only be controlled by the mental means. That part of pranayama which attempts to control the physical manifestations of prana by physical means is called physical science. And that part which tries to control the manifestations of prana as mental force by mental means is called raja yoga. Sending you love and positive vibes. Hello, my friends. So today um, we're going to be talking about prana, which is a really exciting topic for me because it's how I discovered all of this stuff in the first place. Um, coming from Reiki energy healing work um, and really exploring energy was how I found prana which was what led me to yoga and then Ayurveda and all this other stuff. So I find it exciting to be able to bring this little um, information to you today. Um, so prana, I guess I have a bunch of different things that I want to share, but the first place to start, I'm going to start with Raja Yoga, um, their description. There's a chapter on prana 
Um, once you start talking about prana, <clears throat> pranayama is usually um, like the next step. Um, however, I think it's important to understand prana just because of Ayurvedic eating and being able to balance yourself. <clears throat> really what we're doing, or what we're aiming to do is pranayama um, throughout our entire lifestyle. So pranayama is um, really the control of prana. So let's get started in understanding what this prana is and what it means. Um, some term it to be the life force energy. According to the philosophers of India, the universe is composed of two entities, one of which they call akasa and the other prana. Akasa is the all-penetrating existence, everything that has form, everything that is the result of combination is evolved out of akasa. It is akasa that becomes the air, that becomes the liquids, that becomes the solids. It is akasa that becomes the sun, the earth, the moon, the stars, the comets. It is akasa that becomes the human body, the animal body, the plants. Every form that we see, everything that can be sensed, everything that exists. It cannot be perceived. It is so subtle that it is beyond all ordinary perception. It can only be seen when it has become gross and has taken a form. At the beginning of creation, there is only a casa. At the end of the cycle, the solids, the liquids, and the gases all melt into a casa again and the next creation similarly proceeds out of akasa. By what power is akasa manufactured into this universe? By the power of prana. Just as akasa is the infinite omnipresent material of this universe, so is prana the infinite omnipresent manifesting power of the universe. At the beginning and at the end of the cycle, all tangible objects resolve back into akasa and all the forces in the universe resolve back into prana. In the next cycle, out of this prana is evolved everything that we call energy, everything that we call force. It is prana that is manifesting as motion. It is prana that is manifesting as gravitation, as magnetism. It is prana that is manifesting as the actions of the body, as the nerve currents, as thought force. From thought down to physical force, everything is but the manifestation of prana, the sum total of all forces in the universe, mental or physical, when resolved back to their original state, is called prana. When there was neither ought nor not, when darkness covered darkness, what existed then? That akasa existed without motion. The physical motion of prana was stopped, but it existed all the same. At the end of the cycle, the energies now displayed in the universe quiet down and become potential. At the beginning of the next cycle, they start up, strike upon akasa, and thus out of akasa evolve these various forms, and as akasa, changes, prana changes also into all these manifestations of energy. The knowledge and control of prana is really what is meant by pranayama. So I thought that would be a really good way to start the conversation about prana so you understand um, the background and where it comes from. And that was an excerpt from Raja Yoga by Swami Vivekananda, um, the chapter on prana. And then another helpful resource that explains it is the science of pranayama, and that is by Sri Swami Sivananda. I am hopefully getting better at pronouncing these names. So he describes um, when his chapter on what is prana, he who knows prana knows Vedas is the important declaration of the Shrutis 
you will find in Vedanta Sutras, for the same reason breath is Brahman, prana is the sum total of all energy that is manifest in the universe. It is the sum total of all the forces in nature. It is the sum total of all latent forces and powers which are hidden in men and which lie everywhere around us. Heat, light, electricity, magnetism are the manifestations of prana. All forces, all powers and prana spring from the fountain or common source, Atman. All physical forces, all mental forces come under the category prana. It is force on every plane of being from the highest to the lowest. Whatever moves or works or has life is but an expression or manifestation of prana. Akasa or ether also in an expression is an expression of prana. The prana is related to mind and through mind to will and through will to individual soul and through this to the supreme being. If you know how to control the little waves of prana working through the mind, then the secret of subju subjugating universal prana will be known to you. The yogi who becomes an expert in the knowledge of this secret will have no fear from any power because he has mastery over all the manifestations of powers in the universe. So I also liked that little excerpt on prana. And the reason why prana is something that's so important to understand is because with energy healing and also with finding balance and purification, pranayama is, is part of that purification process. So that is the reason why we're talking about it. Um, when you get to the practice of pranayama, you're working to purify the um, energy channels known as the nadis. So in the Indian philosophy, they have um, similar to like in Chinese medicine, you know, like you hear about the meridians and they use those with acupuncture and these different types of healing modalities. Um, it's very similar to that. Um, they call them, in the Indian culture, they call it the nadis. And so you're working to purify the nadis through the breath because breath is life. And um, as you breathe, you are purifying these different parts of your body by allowing the breath, which is that, that life force, into your body. Um, and yoga posturators it can help you stretch out and make sure that the energy, the air, the prana is reaching low enough in your body. So um, the next part we'll just talk, I will talk to you real quick about the purification of the nadis. Um, it's also brightening the gastric fire. So agony is the gastric fire and that's like a whole nother energy and a whole nother day uh, or topic or podcast to talk about. Um, but it, it helps brighten that fire and, um, better health results. If your digestive fire, the more and more research coming out about like the, the gut health and how important gut health is this um this definitely also helps with gut health taking in enough oxygen breathing deeply um allowing your digestive fire energy to be really healthy helps with digestion and as we know digestion's huge um so when the nervous centers have become purified through regular practice of pranayama the air easily forces its way up through the mouth of sushmana <laughs> which is the middle nadi. Um, that is where the kundalini energy comes up out of once you develop that level of purification and practice. Um, so the whole point in these pranayama practices is to be able to allow the energy to flow. Um, and the different nadis... Um, the function of prana is respiration. So that's why this goes hand in hand with pranayama exercises. And there's, um, I guess it'd be helpful to understand that there's five sub pranas 
that um, have function and I don't want to go into too I mean this stuff can get really complex if you want to go deeper and deeper and deeper so there's also different values and sub doshas of the vata vata dosha the vata dosha is in charge of movement and air circulation um, I have talked about this in a previous um, episode so keeping the prana vayu healthy um, and the other sub doshas of vata is part of just regular maintenance of your prana so that I guess we can talk about briefly the importance of keeping your body loose and um, stretched out and doing yoga postures or stretching and these breathing exercises the reason why it all goes together um, if you have tightness in your lower legs it can actually cause issues with you being able to inhale air deep enough into your body for for optimal health so keeping your legs nice and loose your your quads your lower legs your feet um, and then especially your pelvis helps to keep the um, respiration flow as deep as it should be so doing yoga posturing or stretching it really does make um, a large difference with prana so that is another thing. I'm looking at all the different sub doshas and I don't think we need to go into all of that right now. But I think you have a little bit more of an understanding of what prana is. It's that life force energy. And there's ways of increasing it through um, diet, lifestyle, um, different types of exercise, meditation. And as you increase prana, um, you'll have more life force energy, but while you increase prana, prana actually depletes ojas in the body. So I'm going to do a, a separate lecture or chat or whatever you call these about the different um, energies in that respect. So you know how to maintain ojas and a healthy level of ojas as you increase prana. Um, pranayama is not to be done until you are in a place where you are purified um, and not going to cause any harm to your body so you have to make sure that you you start these practices slowly and um, learn about ojas and tejas before you start doing any type of pranayama work so that way you have um, all the safety and guideline precaution stuff out of the way so you understand what you're doing and you don't cause any harm within your body or your mind. I hope this has been helpful. I know it was a little bit rambly, but um, that is prana in a nutshell, uh, at least part one. <laughs> Hello, my friends. So we're going to talk about the subtle energies of prana, tejas, and ojas together to give you a little bit of a better understanding about these subtler energies. So I've already talked a lot about prana, and prana is the subtlest, or the subtler aspect of the vata dosha, that uh, air and movement. The tejas is a subtler um, aspect of the pitta dosha so the fiery transformation part the the part of you that um, is in charge of metabolism and um, luster and just that fire um, and then ojas is um, is really the most important part of today's talk so Ojas is the, the part of the nutrition part, the part of us that is like um, nourishing. And we can nourish ojas using food. Um, so keeping ojas healthy is important um, because as you work to increase your prana and in expand your consciousness, um, 
as prana rises and your consciousness expands, um, ojas becomes depleted. So as prana rises, tejas rises also and perception expands. Your consciousness expands, your perception is expanding. Um, and as a result, the, te the ojas gets depleted. So you can imagine like the prana is being like air because it's part of that vata dosha in a subtler aspect. So it's airy. And the tejas is a subtler aspect of the pitta, that fire. So air and fire are both really drying. And so they kind of dry out the ojas. So making sure that you have a healthy amount of ojas is really important. As your ojas rises, your contentment deepens. So that's the part of us that like has the contentment and that ability to be in a more sattvic state of mind. Um, ojas is responsible for housing and containing the prana and the tejas, which the tejas also includes that kundalini energy. So making sure our ojas is really healthy is vital. Symptoms of a low ojas level is poor stamina, um, easily losing mental or emotional balance, irritability, um, and sensitivity to just minor stresses. Um, the disturbances of prana can appear as anxiety, hyperactivity, depression, uncoordinated thinking. And imbalances with tejas include gullib gullibility and cynicism. If you do deplete your ojas, you can become unstable in mind and body. Your stream of consci consciousness is interrupted. It, it manifests as being like psychosis. So um, making sure to eat a healthy diet that include um, ojas rich foods. So like avocados, bananas, dates, figs, sweet potatoes, zucchinis, nuts, leafy greens, um, whole grains. Um, that can be ojas building foods. You can also look um, on different websites, especially the Ayurvedic websites, to see um, different things within your dosha. Once you calculate and figure out what your constitution is, then you can really start eating appropriate ojas building foods that are specific to you, which I recommend that. You can also increase your ojas by spending time outdoors and doing mm, tranquil activities. Um, that builds your ojas also, like harmonious activity. And um, surprisingly, consuming sweet tastes, as long as it's not fake sugar. Um, incorporating sweet things into your diet is actually very useful. So the tejas is um, the mental fire. And that, um, there are different ways of increasing tejas also so there is a practice where it's called candle gazing so you can like gaze into the fire um, and that is possibly helpful some say that um, doing research or like reading using your mind using your intellect can also increase tejas because it's responsible for that mental fire so um, using it is is helpful um, I think that that gives you a, a pretty good baseline for those three different energies um, since I'm talking about this stuff I guess I could uh, mention the ten principal types of prana since we're uh, still talking about that there is ten types of prana um, prana, apana, samana, udana, vayana, naga, kerma, krikara, devadatta, <laughs> dananjay, 
So those all have specific responsibilities in the body. And you can read, like, you can seriously go pretty in depth here with all these different things. Um, and really learn how to balance yourself, how you would like to feel balanced with prana, tejas, and ojas. So the ojas is the subtle form of the kapha dosha. So that's like in charge of the vital fluid and um, in the body and the subtle form in the mind. Um, the essence of the kasha, kapha dosha in your body tissues. So um, promoting healthy ojas um, promotes mental strength, immunity, stability, endurance, patience, calmness, good memory, all these great things. So if you guys have any questions that come up um, when you're listening to these, send me a message and let me know um, because I'm kind of just shooting in the dark on what I think you are going to find useful and feedback is always appreciated. Sending you love and positive vibes.